there is a great big learning curve for Grand Teton. Huge crowds and little tiny parking lots. And if you only have one day to go to Grand Teton, maybe you're on a road trip, you're gonna to wanna to hit the park right. And that's what we're gonna to talk to you about, the best site to see and the best time to see it. Okay, so here's Jenny Lake, and I just wanted to give you a, a real quick orientation to the park here. You can see on the map here that there's this huge Jackson Lake up here. Uh, and you'd think that would be the focus maybe, but it's, it's not. It's actually these glacial lakes right around here, the base of the Tetons. You can see the big Teton range rising with all these glacial lakes here and this pretty cool relief map from the visitor center. Here's just an up close of these lakes. You can hike to all these lakes. They're all really cool, but the star of them is Jenny Lake. Here's another little map that changes the direction a little bit. So north is now facing that way, but just wanted to show you because this kind of helps orient you to what you will see when you go to Jenny Lake. And let's zoom up a little bit. And there are two entrances or two junctions that have Jenny Lake in the name. So there's South Jenny Lake Junction, and North Jenny Lake Junction. North Jenny Lake Junction actually goes to String Lake, but we wanna go here to South Jenny Lake Junction to actually take the boat ride and to do the main thing there is to do there at Grand Teton. So let's zoom in a little bit, what you'll see when you get on the south side of Jenny Lake. So here is the parking area for Jenny Lake. Now, the most important thing you're going to do today is to get to this parking lot early by eight o'clock. Otherwise, if you're getting here 9.30, you're going to be parking on the road and be getting some bonus hiking that you probably don't want to do. Yeah, this parking will back up all the way out to the main road, the main Teton road. So it looks kind of like a big parking lot, but it fills up quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when you arrive there, there's a few buildings here. There's just little buildings. There's a visitor center and a general store and a permits office. Um, they're real small, so that visitor center is a real small little building, but because this is such a popular area, they put in an outdoor visitor center with these displays that talk about the mountains and some of the history and stuff. And you can even walk out on these paths right here and they have more displays with the overlooks, which is really cool because you're looking at the display while you're looking at the mountains there. It's really a, a nice environment there, I think. And then you make your way over here to the boat dock. Okay, now word to the wise about the boat dock. Number one, go use the restroom before you even think about crossing Jenny Lake because there are no restroom facilities on the other side. The other is get rid of your trash by the visitor center, not even while you're like walking around towards it. There are no garbage cans anywhere, nor are there any on the other side of the lake. So any garbage you have with you, wrappers, whatever you'll be carrying with you until you basically get back to your car. Okay, now the boat will take you across the lake here, and it only takes a couple of minutes, I believe, it's just to get across. 12 minutes. Oh, was it 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, 12 minutes. Okay, now you have another option here, which is to hike around the lake, but that's two miles each way, and we do not recommend it because we think there's better things you can do with your time in Grand Teton than walking around there. We, we recommend the shuttle. Absolutely, and the shuttle is, it's just a nice little break in your day, uh, the prices are $18 for adults round trip. You can pay for a one-way trip for $10. And some people do that. They might choose to walk one way and then ride the shuttle back. Um, you know, there are discounts for children and seniors. We found, though, when we went that the best deal was a family pass. It was $50 for our family of six. So that saved us quite a bit of money. So make sure to look into that. Other things you can do on the ferry with that service is they do scenic cruises for an hour. They're guided. Um, they cost between $15 and $25 a person. They go three times a day and you do get reservations for them. Just to take the shuttle, or not the shuttle, but the ferry across Jenny Lake, it generally runs 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. every day during the tourist season. 
They don't take reservations. You just buy your ticket when you get there. And um, one thing to consider is those lines can get long on both sides of the lake, whether you're going to cross it or whether you're going to come back. Um, those lines can be an hour and a half, and so sometimes people will opt to walk back because it would be quicker. And one other thing to add is that another option that the, that the ferry um, company offers are kayaks and canoes that they don't take reservations for those either. They're $20 an hour or $80 per day, but that's a pretty fun option. We've done that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we loved it. Okay, once you get to the other side, you'll get off the boat and you can't really miss it. There's just, you'll go to your left and you'll take the trail up the hill. You'll cross over a nice little bridge with the river running under it. And you'll get to the first stop which is Hidden Falls. Now you do have to turn left off of the main trail to get there and the falls are hidden. There's a reason why they're called hidden. They're kind of tucked <laughs> back in the trees so you actually can't see them from the main trail. So don't don't miss it. You need to pay attention to the sign. Now there's a lot of other people going that way but we actually walked past it a little bit and then we were like, wait a <laughs> minute. No, no, there it is. So we knew what we were looking for of course but you don't want to miss Hidden Falls. Go there and enjoy those waterfalls, they're cool because you're at the bottom of the waterfalls as they come down where in Yellowstone, you're always at the top of the waterfalls. Okay, and then after you do that, you're gonna hike up a few switchbacks here. In this image, the trail looks a little scary and steep, but it's actually not that bad. It's kind of wide. You have plenty of room to walk up there. And you will get to Inspiration Point here, which is where you can overlook Jenny Lake and the Teton, or the Jackson Hole Valley. And this is not a difficult hike. It's about a mile to inspiration point total. I wouldn't say it's too strenuous. I'd say most people could do that hike. Now one of the reasons we say don't take the loop around the lake is because when you get to the top of inspiration point, instead of just hiking straight back down, you could head back up into this canyon for a little, way, a little ways. This is called Cascade Canyon. Now it goes way back in here for miles and miles. It's an all day thing, but you could just go up there for a little ways and turn around. It's a really pretty view of the Tetons. And then when you come back, you can either take this trail down here, this little canyon, and get all the way back to the boat dock. Or you go back down to Hidden Falls, and then you'll cross over the river and come back down this way for slightly different views of the canyon there and the rivers coming down. A pretty little walk back down. Perfect. If this has been helpful to you at all, go ahead and click like and hang out for a little bit longer because it's only going to be noon by the time you finish this and we have more ideas for how to spend the rest of your day. Okay, exactly. So, so yeah, you get there about 8, you get done about 12-ish, and now what are you going to do with your one day grand <laughs> Okay, we're actually going to start off by telling you the three things not to do right now. Okay, by noon, the park is packed. Every parking lot you go to is going to be full, especially String Lake, Taggart Lake, and Phelps Lake. Don't even think about it unless you're there like in March, November. <laughs> if you're there in the summer, those places are going to be full and it's not worth your time. However, there are tons of other things to do. And you know, around four o'clock, 4.30ish, those parking lots start emptying out. You can head back to those later on in the day, but don't try them right now. Okay, so we've kind of broken it down by what you're interested in. So if you want to take some photos and just take in some pretty scenery, go do some drives. Uh, Jenny Lake has a beautiful drive that you can go on. That yeah. scenic drive that I was telling you. Yes, exactly. Or you can do the inner and outer roads. So here's the inner road, here's the outer road. And some of the famous spots on there are Schwabacher Landing, mm -hmm. very famous photo site down by the river. Uh, the Snake River Overlook, which I think is about right there. Oxbow Bend. Oxbow Bend is up here. Very nice photo spots, all three of those. Absolutely, so some pretty spots. Now if you're wanting to get something to eat, you can head to Dornan's, which is close to Jenny Lake. Dornan's is at the Moose Junction. And they have, you can also rent kayaks there do a little bit of shopping. The food there smells delicious. I think there's a lot of good options to eat there. 
Uh, you could also, if you want to go for a drive, you can head up to Culture Bay and get some pizza at Leek's Pizza. Leek's, Leek's right there. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're into shopping and touristy things, go check out Teton Village. There's a gondola. There are all sorts of stores. There's recreational things to do. You can watch people ride their bikes down the mountain. That's just kind of a fun, fun, fun place to hang out. Um, you could go head into Jackson Hole. There is no lack of activities to do in Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. Jackson Hole's off this map down there a little south, but there's that's a real popular place to go. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in looking for animals, go look for Bear 399. Yeah, Bear 399, a very famous grizzly bear. We did another video on this, so please check that out. But she hangs out, she tends to hang out right up here with her four little cubs. And really, there's bear watchers out all over the place. If you drive up there, you probably find some bear watchers. You could ask them if they've seen her. Or the most famous animal to look for in the Grand Tetons are moose. Moose. And you'll see moose here at Moose Junction. There's a reason why they call it Moose Junction. And then on that Moose Wilson Road right there. And then also over in the Gravant area. Yes. And honestly, you're going to see the word Gravant. And it looks like gross venture. But don't say it like a noob. Say Gravant. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, there's history things. There is Mormon Row and Mennings Ferry that you can go check out. Yeah, Mormon Row there. Uh, Meaners Ferry there. Um, those are two little history sites there. Meaners Ferry also has the a little chapel, a little church right there, the very famous image of a church with the Tetons in the background. Really great photo spot. And then Cunningham Cabin out there with, they have some horses, a little ranch out there, old little log building. Yep, anyway, and then like we said earlier, four o'clock, 4.30 goes around, comes around, go check out one of those lakes. We have videos on all sorts of things in Jackson Hole, so check out our other videos. We're Matt and Cheryl with We're in the Rockies, and we just want you to have a great trip to the West. So please check out our other resources on our YouTube channel, and we also have a webpage, we're in the Rockies.com. And if you want to put your pen and pencil down and just let us take care of the planning, we have prepared some itineraries on our website that you could just go to and print off, and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching.